this is where Ken Kesey lives with his wife, Faye. You might think we're here to see the famous bus or buses. Well, we will, but that's not why we're here. We're here to see what Ken is working on, to catch up with a writer responsible for at least two masterpieces. Aha, good. Simplicity itself. There's work to do this morning, but there aren't any words involved. There's paint, water, grandkids, and some empty video boxes. Okay. We've got a critic, an on-the-scene critic. Good. Bad. Oh, no, I think that's a good one. See that little nice swirling color there? No, it's bad. It's a bad one. We'll put it over the reject pile. At Ken's office in downtown Pleasant Hill near Eugene, he's further decorating those boxes. Longtime collaborator and fellow merry prankster Ken Babs is helping. These boxes have been dipped by the head diplomat. And then finished individually by Ken himself. I try to tape over the weak parts. So that gives it a kind of an underwater look. Now, if I go for my underwater stuff over here, I should be able to come up with a fish or something like that. Or a frog. A frog will go good in there. A frog decal. And so each box has its own separate meaning. Each box has its own separate set of problems, boy. You, because uh, you're, once you get into it, you realize, shoot, I'm already way over budget. <laughs> what goes inside the boxes? A video called Intrepid Traveler and His Merry Band of Pranksters Look for a Cool Place. It contains films shot during the original trip on the original bus in 1964. Ken, his friends, and his driver, Neil Cassidy. Yes, Dean Moriarty himself. We are actually fourth dimensional beings in a third dimensional body inhabiting a second dimensional world. Ken shot some new things, not so much to explain the doings in the film, but to, I guess, supplement it. Today, Ken is working on volume two. It's an interesting document, but it's this new process of expression for him, working here, editing film on a 21st century editing system, as well as the new media he's involved in, that has Kesey excited. The editing god is looking over my shoulder. Oh, thank you, editing god. <laughs> Keep it up. Is the editing god different from the writing god? A lot. Um, the writing god is, uh, you're by yourself. And you're communicating with this one other person out there that's going to read this stuff, you hope. The editing god is uh, already dealing with more than one, peop one person. He's... Uh, um, because we already know so much about editing rules because of all the movies that we watch. Um, all these uh, dissolves and cuts, those are, that's the punctuation to the sentence. And it's much the same uh, rules that you, you follow as a writer. This hasn't replaced words on paper for you, has it? Uh, it's changed the way I look at words on paper. Oh. The... Um, there's certain things that you don't want to read on the internet because they're too long and too thick and too turgid and too gray. So it's changed the length of my sentences uh, to where it comes across to the, to the viewer as quickly as possible. That's why I don't think it will be just long, long, drawn-out novels because you don't need to describe her bedroom if you can show a picture up there. And you, so much of the writer's effort has gone into decorating the place, to setting the scene, to getting the lighting just right, to putting the sofa over there so it uh, frames that one area of the room. And a lot of what we think of as storytelling is just window dressing. And I see it changing very fast and very, for a very positive reason. <laughs> This barn belonged to my dad, this property, and then to my brother, then to me. And we know, we know this piece of land. He took us, as he takes most TV crews, to the Holy Sepulchre in the Swamp, where the original bus has its final resting place. Sweet, 
it's, it's very happy here. And it's, it would be a real mistake to try to move it. It's, it. People come down and it's got its own particular beauty. Down beneath each of these layers is another layer, just like archaeology. You come down here with a good set of fingernails, you can pick your way into the past. The bus itself is a spirit that goes on whether the bus is there or not. This is the shell and the, uh, the talisman. He writes in here. His latest work is ready for publication, an art book with words based on his prison experiences in 1969. I did these uh, pages of the jail journal, which is called Cut the M asterisk, 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 all the way over to S at the end, loose. Uh, so you never use that word, so you can get it on the cover of the book. And the plot that was going on in this uh, sheriff's honor camp was uh, a black and white plot. There was 99 people at the camp, 50% of them were black, 50 were white, give or take a few numbers. And it was like a lab where you saw the white and the black working together, and it worked up to a uh, near race riot that happened after I'd been in there about four months, five months. And I saw it building, and I had notes of it, and I have uh, recordings of it, and I want this to come out as a book over on this side to have the uh, print so you don't have to struggle through my writing. So you, you open it, you see a book about this big with this picture, you're able to read it there, and you continue to do that. What does it say on there? It says, tick, 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 just in case we'd better deactivate, check the vermatic control, pack, pack, turn down the fumaloid, then see the magna pole doesn't oscillate, crack, stand back, oh, no, no, snap, too late, after the sufficient period, circle the particular time, don't you recall, thunder. Well, it finally struck, so that it, it, it has a rhythm that goes with the, uh, uh, with the text and with the pictures. It's poetry. It's, it's hopefully. Can you imagine not working? No, no. I've got so much stuff to finish. I've started so many things and I don't want to leave them undone the way Hemingway did or Nelson Algren. Uh, that last book of Hemingway is called The Garden of Eden. Oh, it's embarrassing. All you can think of is seeing the poor spirit of Hemingway up there in heaven thinking, no, I didn't publish that because I didn't want it published. It's not any good. And they just can't do anything about it. I want to finish off all that stuff so it is presentable. So it's fairly well sandpapered and, and you can bring it out. I don't want to bring out a half-cooked uh, birthday cake with the candles still lying unlit on top of the frosting. Ken Kesey is much too vast to corral in a story this short. Too many levels and layers. He revealed a couple of them to us media strangers from OPB, but many more remain. Is he an icon? Was he playing the Ken Kesey role? Is he pranking us? Who knows? Be grateful, as we are, that he gave us a glimpse.